Well, hey crafty friends, it's Heidi Scott with DIY Dreaming and on this video tutorial I have some super cute painter's drop cloth daisies. Two different styles uh, or they could be sunflowers, I don't know. It's open to interpretation what kind of flower exactly they are. But this is what I'm going to show you how to make. And I have a lot more ideas. <laughs> So this is just the, probably the tip of the iceberg on this whole theme. So let's hop right in and let me show you what is involved and then we'll just get started. But as you're hopping on, say hello. Um, I'd love to know where you're watching from. Feel free to sprinkle, feel free to ask questions. And at the end, if you're interested in any of these things that I'm using, just say link. And I'll give you the information. Okay, so we're going to be using some painter's drop cloth. This is Everbuilt brand, E V E R B I L T brand. It's from either Home Depot's or Lowe's. It's medium duty. It's kind of a a nice oatmeal color. Um, it was super stiff and crunchy in the package, so you wash it twice and you dry it twice on hot. And it softens up, and it's just the nicest stuff to work with. So you need painter's drop cloth. Let's see where I'm going to put it. Um, and then you're going to need some dowels. And you can get these everywhere. But this particular package came from Walmart. And then we're going to use these two new stencils from MagnoliaDIY.com. This one is an all-over see what's up and down. Daisy pattern. I've already used it four times. It's awesome. And this one is called butterfly pattern. It's awesome too. You guys, these are the most versatile kind of stencils because you can make anything with them all year long. So I have those two. And then I also wanted to suggest that you could do it with the flower powder stencil which is an awesome one too okay and then you're going to need some polyfill you can use some buttons if you would like and i just opted for a little variety of some black vintage buttons and then you're going to need a pattern and this is mine for one and then this is the other pattern that i just cut out of computer paper. So I'll, I'll show you everything as we go through it step by step. All right. Oh, and I also wanted to mention that this stencil, this daisy, is awesome to do etched glasses with. And I was just fiddling around with it this morning on some glasses that I picked up at Goodwill. There were like four of them for $1.29, so it was like a good practice. And then I've used many different kinds of etching cream. Today, we're trying this Armor Etch, okay? This will not hurt these Magnolia stencils. So I'll come back to you again with a whole project on glass etching, but I just wanted to give you a little quick view of how incredibly versatile these stencils are. They're amazing. Okay, the first thing I did was, like I said, I washed and dried and washed and dried this. And then I just opened it up to the spot that I wanted. And there are gonna be flaws. Places where it looks like it's snagged or something, that's just, that is just how this stuff is. And that's part of the charm. Well, hey, Teresa, how are you doing? You guys, I live in Georgia, okay? And it's, what is it, June 13th or 14th, 2022. It is like supposed to be 96 degrees here today. And it's also like a zillion percent humidity. So it is so dang hot. It's just miserable. Anyways. Um, okay, so I'm, I would use this. I'm not going to actually do it because I have some that I've already done that I'm going to show you. You just lay your stencil down. Let's scooch back just a little bit. And the, there's no front or back to this, um, to this fabric. Oops, I'm so sorry, guys. So either side, okay? And then you're gonna press it down really good. And then I 
I used Magnolia ink in black with the squeegee and I just pushed it big blocks of it on and you literally just push it through the holes with the squeegee and then you go and wash your stencil in cool water and I want to warn you don't freak out but you will get some little bits of the painter's drop cloth on your stencil and um, if you just work with it with a like these cleaning sponges are awesome this is the magnolia one it's not a it's not a Mr. Magic Eraser or whatever, because those are loaded with chemicals. But anyways, if you just work with one of these magic erasers with the back of your stencil when it's wet, you can get all those little fibers out. So, I've already used this multiple times. Okay, so that's what I did, and then, when it was dry, I'm going to do all the really fun stuff in person. When it was dry, I heat set it with a hot iron for about three minutes on cotton. Oops, I just lost my earring. And um, that's it. Theoretically, it could be washed, but there's no way you're gonna wash these flowers. And if you hopped on after the beginning of this video, you probably don't even know what we're making, but this is what we're making. I'm gonna show you two different ways. Um, actually, I'm gonna probably tell you about three different ways. Okay, so this is what I have. I made, and I've already cut some of it out, I made some fabric with the daisy pattern, and then I made some fabric with the butter, all over butterfly pattern. Okay, so then the next thing is um, I'm going to do... I'm going to do this last because it's the easiest. I'm going to take my pattern. You decide what size you want, but I'll tell you what mine is in case you want to know. Um, this is just a cereal bowl we have in our kitchen. It's not quite six inches from diameter, I think is what the correct word is. Okay, and I want to make sure that my whole circle is actually on the printed part of the fabric. And I'm just going to trace my bowl. You know, you really do not have to have fancy anything to do the kind of projects that I like to do here. Cut this out. So what is everyone doing? I was just reading somebody's comment about how they got their June uh, Craft Club box and they can't stop smiling. It's a super cute project. I made a bag using the June Craft Club box project. I, use, I made a tote bag for my, Bibles, for my summer Bible study. It's really cute. Is what we have. All right, and there's no point saving any of this unless you want to. Okay, so then the next thing you're going to do is you're going to need a piece of, um, and I'll give you a little sneak peek. Like I said, I'm still working on this idea, but I also stenciled that daisy pattern in yellow ink. I'm not sure. Um, I was too excited, though, to wait <laughs> another day to show you this much, but because it's so adorable. Okay, so now I'm just going to pin this, and I'm going to cut another, I'm going to cut it back. So it'll fit exactly. And honestly, it doesn't have to be perfect. so far do you like this idea I mean these are adorable and they're 
are so many different ways that you can um, change these up, I think. They're, um, the outside of it, the, the petals, are made using that loopy flower technique that I've done here before, but I'll show it to you again. And you can do them whatever length, depending on what kind of fabric you're using and how stiff or not it is. Um, you could cut points on the end of them. This paint, painter's drop cloth is pretty soft and fluffy. So it's not going to have a whole bunch of stand-up ability to it. So I just made it kind of floppy looking. But um, anyways, I'm excited. Okay, I'm almost done cutting this out. We need a front and a back. And I'm actually going to start with the back, which might seem kind of weird. Uh, but we're going to glue... We're going to be gluing the, um, the petal thing on the inside back, okay? And I did not iron or anything before I got started here because I wanted it to look crumpled and whatnot. Okay, here is a strip that I tore. I just took a little notch out of one end of it and pulled. And um, this stuff just rips so nice. It's really oddly satisfying to tear fabric, I think. Okay, and let me think for just a minute. What did I do? Okay, so let me tell you how wide this is. And then the length really is whatever you want. And it depends on how big your flower is. I feel like I'm, I need some new equipment. And it feels like it's leaning one side and now we're leaning the other way. So hopefully you're not seasick. I don't know if that's better. Okay, this is four inches wide. And what you're going to do is you are just going to glue a bead of glue right along one side. This is just exactly like what we do when we make the loopy flowers, where you are make, making a tube, basically. And I've got some that's pretty nearly ready, so I'm just going to cut this off and we're going to pretend that this is the right length. You would want it so it's going to go all the way around your flower. Okay, I have a tube. And let me pick this in straight because it's really weird. Okay, and then just like with the felt loopy flowers, you're going to cut snips from the loop up to where your glue is. And you'll be able to feel it. And these loops can be as wide or as narrow as you want. Can you see what I'm talking about? Okay, let me finish this because then I'm going to show you two different things that you can do with it. And um, this was four inches, so the loops are about two inches. But you could do bigger or smaller. As with almost all my crafts, you can totally customize this to your color preference, the size or dimension that you want. Um, whatever you want. Okay, so this is going to create these loopy flowers that will look like this. Can you see the loops? Okay, and to create the ones with the flat, not loop, guess what you do? You cut the loop, but don't cut it until after you glue it, okay? Um, so if you wanted the knot loop, you're just, after you glue it, you're just going to go through and snip these, and then you have fringy and not loopy. All right, so back to our back. Um, hopefully this is enough. Yeah. 
Okay, I made this before it came live and I snipped off the little snips. And what you're gonna do is you're, you're gonna make this, um, you're gonna glue it around the inside of your back and then we'll add the top over it and then we'll stuff it. And I'm just gonna put some glue kind of right along the edge. And I'm pulling and shaping this to go around the circle as I'm going. I did not do a very good job there. I do kind of have to be careful also because this um, painter's drop cloth is pretty soft and you can end up tearing it if you're really rough. So don't be really rough. I'm gonna hold this up and show you. We are just going around our circle. And the inside has, is gonna get all covered up. And I'm just curving it as I'm gluing it down. Sorry about all the noise out there. I don't know if you can hear that, but um, of course our, I don't think our yard crew should even be working in this temperature, but they are, and they're outside right now. Uh, right at the moment, I'm trying to do a video. Okay, we're almost there, and I did have enough. Yay. So let's see. I'm going to cut it off right here. And um, this is one of those craft projects where it's going to be strings all over. This is what the outside back is going to look like. This is the inside. And it looks pretty good. All right. Now, there's not really necessarily an up or down for this butterfly pattern. So you can decide what you want to have be the up or down. And then you're going to want to get your dowel out. And this was a package I bought at Walmart. It was 60 different pieces. It's kind of cool. It has all different shapes, like squares, uh, big chunky circles, smaller circles. I think I'm going to kind of do right down here is my place that it's gonna uh, be done. So, I'm gonna put my glue. Start pushing my front into the little sandwich of the back piece and the loopy part. And I'm using a low temperature hot glue gun today. If you guys are new to DIY dreaming, then you don't know. <laughs> but everybody else who's been here a while knows that I pretty much only use a low temperature hot glue gun. This is a cheapy, cheapy, but it's a great one. It's Sherbonder Cool Shot. It's low temperature. Um, I feel like it's maybe even a little bit lower than a regular low temperature. And as a crafter, maybe you feel the same. I have just had way too many hot glue burns, and I'm not doing that to myself anymore. So this really, of course you don't want to deliberately put it on your hands, but it's so much lower of a temperature that if you do get some glue on your fingers, you're not going to have blisters and be miserable for days. Uh-oh. Did I forget what I was doing and blow past my spot? I think I did. Alright, and I'm not going to glue the whole thing closed. Um, this is the front and this is the back. And what I want to tell you is that um, 
you could sew this if you want, but not everybody knows how to sew. So that's why I almost always just use hot glue, uh, but it's completely up to you. Okay, I'm looking for a needle that has a little bit of black thread on it. And then we're gonna look for a button. And I'm gonna sew it in the center through both sides right now and then stuff around it and that kind of gives it the little cinch in the center. And this is what I'm talking about. I cinched this one. I did not cinch this one. Can you see the difference? And you know what? Let's don't cinch this one actually because I'm gonna cinch the next flower. So I'll hang on to this. But all you would do is go back and forth, back and forth with a black button of your choice on the front. Easy. All right, so let me get my stuff in. in my drawer. We are using Crafters Polyfill from Walmart. It's super stiff, which makes it great. And it's, this is what it looks like. Um, it's the kind of stuff, I guess, that you use if you make dolls and stuff like that. It's probably not enough. And I like to tear it apart a little bit before I use it so it's not super clumpy. And I'm just going to start shoving it in here. Several of you guys say that, oh, there's, hello, Mrs. Scott. There's another Mrs. Scott out there that just said hello to me. Um, several of you guys have said that you like this craft. I am excited. I have done crafts that are kind of similar, like these, we did these last year. We're gonna do some more of these, by the way. I call these twirly-doos. Um, but anyways, this was using uh, canvas duck, and it's a little bit different, but it's kinda of has a, a little bit of the same elements as this. I think doing it on painter's drop cloth, though, gives it a completely different look. Yes, you can, you can take apart an old pillow that you don't like anymore and use that for stuffing. I have done that before. When I didn't have any and I also didn't feel like running somewhere to get it, I just often I'll use what I have. And I've taken away, taken pillows apart before. Okay, so you're just gonna fill it however full you want, and I can fiddle around with that later. And then I'm gonna poke a hole that my dowel's gonna go down. Put my dowel in here. And then I'm gonna cover the front and the back of that up a little bit more with some fill because I don't want it to be visible Alrighty. Okay. And now I'm just gonna glue it closed. Put the dowel in here. Easy peasy. And I have just gotten glue all over, but it didn't, it's not killing me. So there we go. Isn't it cute? And um, let me stick these guys in here and then we'll move on to this one. So, like I said, if you want loops, then you don't cut it. If you want these little flappy looking things, then all you do is once you get it glued on, you just clip all your loops. And this was four inches wide, folded in half, glued at the center, and then you're just gonna fuzz it up a little bit and it'll look great. Okay, so let's put these guys in here real quick.
and your dowels can be cut all different heights if you want. Is that cute or what? Sometimes I just get so tickled. This was a middle of the night idea. <laughs> and you know what started it was I wanted to do flowers today, but I don't really have any of the um, canvas duck left. And I did not want to make a trip to the fabric store or to Walmart today to get it. So I was like, I bet you I could do this idea. Because you could do this with the canvas duck fabric too. But I was like, I bet you you could use painter's drop cloth and you could get a totally different look. And that is what I think this is. And you could use any, really any of the pattern stencils are going to look great. This one called Flower Power would be super cute. This one is Daisy, and this one is um, Butterflies. There's a retro flower. There's Berries and Lace. There's my favorite Victorian pattern. I mean, the MagnoliaDIY.com has a ton of different pattern stencils that are awesome. So, um, yeah. Okay, so let's make this other little guy. All right, which one do I want to do? I think I'm going to do this butterfly again because I have a sunflower right now, or a daisy. Tell me, what do you think? Is, does this look like a sunflower or does it look like a daisy? To me, it looks more like sunflower. I don't know. Maybe it's just the colors that I have it. This is black ink on painter's drop cloth. All right, so I made a pattern. And I wanted a flower that had five petals, which was kind of hard to get. But I just folded a piece in paper, a paper in half, and then I drew this part, this, and this. And then I kept cutting until I got it a reasonable shape. And I know someone's going to ask, so let me tell you. It is five and a half inches from the tip of a flower to the point down below, five and a half. Okay, so let's just flip our fabric over. And I'm gonna make sure my whole entire flower is on the fabric that um, is, uh, has a design on it, not the edges. Okay, now I'm just going to pin this on and cut it out around the pattern, but you could trace it. That would work too. Just like I traced the cereal bowl to make the round. Now that I'm doing it with it taped to the pattern, I'm realizing that the first one that I did was much easier because I just traced it. <sighs> so I'll show you that when we cut out the back. out beforehand. I'm sorry. You guys are just sitting here waiting for me. I thought about waiting till tomorrow when I could have, you know, even more examples to show you, but I just couldn't wait. There's no way I was going to be able to wait another day to show you this idea. This is what the pattern looks like. 
My lights make it super hot in this craft room. I'm going to turn on a fan. Okay, I need a, a piece that is plain. Let's see. Let's use this. Let's cut it from this piece that I gave you a little sneak peek of earlier because I was fiddling around with yellow to see if that could work. And I think it could. So I don't have a pattern other than this five petaled flower that I just kind of created on a piece of computer paper. You could Google flower pattern or something if you need to have an exact pattern. Um, there's absolutely nothing special about this, um, but I don't have any way to get it to you. So. What do you guys think so far? Do you like this idea? Are you tired of flowers yet? Because I'm still feeling it. I have lots more flowers in my brain that are waiting to come out. Unless you guys are completely sick of flowers. the best cutting job that I have ever done but that will work oh shoot you know what I'm just noticing <gasps> remember how I was telling you that I was going to make sure that I was fully on the fabric well I messed up there so I'll just live with it um yeah oops to put a pin on through it and then we're gonna sew um, about right in the same spot a we're gonna sew a button on um, if you're using different colors you could use a different kind of button different color whatever you want and I'm just going for a, a planer button I'm going to start my knot here at the front. This way I'll be able to hide the little knot at the end of my piece of thread. And then you're just going to go up and down and up and down a few times just to kind of cinch it together when we stuff it so it'll have some dimension, some shape. You could keep going over this as much as you want. But I'm going to say good right here. And then I'm going to do a little knot on the back that'll disappear 
when it gets stuffed. It's right in front of me. Ta -da. Okay, did you guys see this video that I did last year where I showed you how to make a needle book? It's a great place to store your needles and um, I even put them back in there sometimes with thread still on them just to, like I just used the thread that was on this, just to save myself a little time. Um, I'll dig out that video and reshare it to DIY Dreaming. All right, we're doing our usual. We're just gluing the front and the back together. We're not going to do the whole entire thing right at the very beginning, though, because I want to stuff it kind of as I'm going along. looking at my flower and I'm seeing where my front and my back don't match very well. Okay. So let's just put a little bit of stuffing up in this top little area. You can fill these as full as you like. This, again, is personal preference. Um, if you want it super full or you just want it to have a little bit of shape. Let's see how it's starting to get some shape. And the button in the center is cinching everything in and giving it some curve. Okay, I'm gonna glue one more of these little points. And darn, I'm really sorry that I overlooked that. I thought I was being so careful. Shoot. All right, and we're going to use a dowel. I'm going to make it a little bit shorter. this wood a little bit and then it'll break right off. Okay, we'll be putting our dowel in right here. Use my marker. That's a great idea. Thank you. I will do that. Yeah, I'm not going to do it right now, but I will fiddle around with that and I bet you I can camouflage it just fine. If I was making this as a gift for somebody, I would be um, very unhappy. But when I'm making things for my house or just to show you guys how to do something, if it's not perfect, that's generally okay with me because um, I'm just doing this to figure out how to do it and to be able to show you guys how to do it. So my projects don't have to be the absolute best thing in the whole universe. If you ask me. Okay. 
All right, I'm gonna come back and trim some more of it. But look how cute that is. And this is what we got going. What do you think? Pretty darn cute, huh? It's such a different color combination, just this black and oatmeal color with super graphic stencils, designs. Um, and I think almost any one of the patterned stencils that you can get at magnoliadiy.com would work just great. Um, you can make them bigger or smaller with whatever kind of fabric you want. Where am I? Um, yeah, I really feel like this is something that you could totally jazz up to be exactly your style um, and go in your decor. So, yeah, it's fun. And what did I spend here? <laughs> Almost nothing. Uh, some buttons, some glue, one use of these stencils, a teeny little bit of ink, um, the painter's drop cloth is not expensive at all. I mean, I probably have, not including the little container that it's in, but I probably have less than $2 worth of supplies here. And it's just a matter of um, doing something a little different, going slightly outside of whatever your comfort zone would be. Yeah. All righty. Well, do a this or a this or say something to me in the comments if you want to see the other stuff I have coming up this week and next weekend. Um, check up here to see if you've liked and followed DIY Dreaming and turn on your notifications. Also, I have a text alert. Um, thank you, my Bob, and I'll post the number for that this afternoon. So if you've been wishing there was a way to know when I was about to go live, that's it. That's the way to know. And um, all you have to do is you send a text to this number that I'm going to give you. It's not my own personal <laughs> cell phone number, don't worry. Um, and then when I go live, I put a notification there that it sends out, usually 10 to 15 minutes beforehand. And I always say what it is that I'm going to be doing. So you can decide. Mm, I don't really like to make flowers. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna watch her make flowers out of painter's drop cloth today. But I do always try to give you that that information and that option. All right. Well, thanks so much for joining me. I'll get pictures. I'll put them here in the comments. If you want a link to any of these, oops, uh, patterned stencils to ink or to anything else. Just say link and I'll be glad to get that for you. Hope that you guys have a blessed and wonderful rest of your day and I hope that I'll see you guys tomorrow.